Hello and welcome back to the Stronger Than Steel podcast. My name is John Keir and joining me today, as always, is my co-host Austin Davidson from Long Island, New York. hi It is Season 2, Episode 22. We're going to be looking at the Steelers and Falcons preview for Week 2 of the preseason. That game is coming up Sunday at 4 o'clock, the Steelers' first of two home preseason games. But before we get into that preview, wanted to get some news and notes around the NFL. So the biggest NFL news coming out the last week or so has been the six-game suspension of Ezekiel Elliott, the Dallas Cowboys running back. It has been announced today that he's going to appeal his uh, his six-game suspension. So what are your thoughts about that? Uh, as the charges were dropped, it makes sense. The person representing him dropped Greg Hardy's suspension from 10 games to four. Uh, so he has a chance to get it down to about four or three. Realistically, though, I think it will only be reduced to five, but I, I think it's the right decision to uh, appeal the suspension. What do you think? I think it's a no-brainer to appeal this right now. I mean, the charges were dropped. It's pretty clear that that's <laughs> it's kind of an error to be suspended for something you were not even convicted for. I'm betting the suspension gets reduced to four, maybe even three games. But like I said, it's it's a travesty that he's not allowed to play right now, but... It's also the Cowboys, so I don't feel too bad myself. Moving on, uh, it sounds like the Browns are going to be grooming Brock Osweiler to be their starting quarterback right now. This this actually comes right from Joe Thomas, their starting left tackle. Is this a good idea in your opinion, Austin? Uh, well, Brock has the most experience in this stable. And at one point, the team thought he was worth $18 million a year. So why not let him uh, start and give him one last cham- chance to perform like he did in Denver? What do you think? Um, you know, I, I'm in uh, I'm in agreement with you here. The Browns are a pretty bad team, especially offensively. It'd be pretty foolish to let Deshaun Kaiser try to win games without much help. And yeah, I know he has some more pieces around him now than the other quarterbacks did in the past, but he also wasn't the number one overall pick. Most guys can't step in there week one and, uh, and can show that they have what it takes to lead a team. Now... This will also give him some time to learn the offense, and I think it's going to give Brock Osweiler one last chance to show that he's an NFL-capable player in the same way he showed during a seven-week stretch in Denver a couple of years ago. Moving on from that, we have some Steelers news to get to, the most notable being that Joey Porter recently stated that it sounds like T.J. Watt is going to be starting alongside Bud Dupree as the starting out right outside linebacker, while James Harrison will back him up and will serve as the quote-unquote relief pitcher for T.J. Watt. Today, when asked, Harrison said that he was unaware that this was the case, but that he was all right with the decision that was being made. First of all, is this the right decision? And second of all, what does this mean respectively for both Watt and Harrison? Uh, If Steelers are making this call, I believe that it is the right call. They must really think that Watt is something special if he's going to be starting immediately over Harrison. And if he performs like he did in the preseason, he will be something special. So it, it won't. I think it's the right move. But uh, honestly, uh, this doesn't really mean much for either player. Watt was drafted to take over James Harrison's position. It's just happening faster than expected. Uh, what do you think? You know, originally I thought the first time I heard this, I thought this might have been a mistake. The whole offseason, this is kind of how I thought it was going to work out. James Harrison was probably going to play a bulk of the early season snaps, and TJ would back him up and kind of learn how to play in the NFL. Later in the year, probably around the halfway point of the season, Watt would start to start would start to take more of his snaps, and then ultimately would take just about all of them. This would give Harrison some time to recuperate and rest up before the playoffs, where he could be used in situation situations for rushing the passer, or in case Watt were to go down with an injury. Now, all that being said, if this like you said, if this is a decision is being made solely by uh, what the coaches are seeing in practice, then it's great. Let him start. They clearly think very highly of him, and if he can play the bulk of the snaps, you know Harrison is going to be more effective later on if he's ever needed. The only thing I'm skeptical of is how Harrison said that he's okay with this. I I really think Harrison wants to play, and he's he's just saying that so he doesn't cause a problem. So moving on, Uh, Several key injured players are returning to practice. Uh, This includes guys like James Conner, Cameron Sutton, and Sammy Coates. Uh, How important is the return of these three players specifically and for the overall health of the roster? Uh, The most important return for me is going to be Cameron Sutton. 
I want to see what he could do as a returner because so far the return game seems to be just as bad as it was last year. So I want to see someone fresh try at it. And uh, it is, however, good to hear that uh, Coates and Connor will be returning. I want to see if Coates has a chance of staying with the Steelers next year as well as uh, what Connor has to offer as a running back. Uh, what do you think? Well, they're mildly important. None of these guys are really going to be playing much, at least off the bat. Uh, as far as Coates goes, he really just needs to stay healthy, and I think that's how he makes this team. I think because he was a third-round pick a couple years ago, he's still going to get one more chance to prove that he can be something. Cam Sutton is probably going to play at some point this year, but the longer he's out, the longer it's going to take for him to get on the field. And due to his injury, I'd be surprised if we see him playing much until the mid midseason point. And as far as Connor's concerned, the most he's going to be playing, aside from if Le- Le'Veon Bell gets injured or suspended, is probably only a few snaps a game. I mean, what do we see? Fitzgerald Toussaint, a max of 10 snaps a game at most. I mean, when Bell is healthy, he's going to be playing. That's as simple as it is. Moving on, we have some breaking news from ESPN. Wide receiver Juju Smith-Schuster was taken off the field for an evaluation after a hit he absorbed during running drills. Uh, The Steelers brought out a cart for Smith-Schuster, but he was able to walk off on his own, and he was on the ground for a few minutes. Uh, We don't know much right now, Austin, but this is clearly not good. Uh, Honestly, though, I'm not too worried. Mike Tomlin uh, came out and said it's not as serious as it looked, so I'm not really worried. Uh, Do you think it's something to worry about? I mean... Only because he just suffered a concussion on Friday. Otherwise, I'd, I'd believe the coach outright, you know, no questions asked. But he did suffer a concussion in the game on Friday, so that's something I am a little concerned about. That's, that's certainly something to not mess with, as we know, in the ch- forever changing NFL landscape due to CTE studies. Now, getting away from that, we wanted to talk a little bit. Training camp has really flown by, hasn't it, Austin? It really has. It's, it's just go ahead, go ahead. Uh, it's just been like super short and super quick, even though it's already been like what twenty days. Something like that. Camp breaks on Friday, as a matter of fact, right before their second preseason game. Uh, now that we've come to, we've we're almost at the conclusion of yet another Steelers training camp at St. Vincent College in Latrobe. Are there some or any players who are on this team right now that perhaps at the beginning of camp were on the outside looking in at the 53-man roster but might have made their way into the roster? Uh, I have Mike Hilton. Mike Hilton, I really didn't even – I don't even know if he was on the practice squad last year. I believe he was. I believe he, uh, I believe he hung around the Steelers last year. But uh, this year he's looking poised to take a spot. He performed really well in his first preseason game, obviously. And uh, I think he is going to make this team. Who do you have? Uh, Well, first of all, I'm in complete agreement with you. I think Hilton is making this team. Uh, Injuries may have helped his his cause, but so so is all the plays he's been making so far, too. Uh, My player I have is Kobe Hamilton. That doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be making this team, but the way he performed last week in the game against the Giants, it... Is it's at least going to make the Steelers' decision to cut him a lot harder than it was before. Now, he had been struggling in training camp, but those two big catches plus whatever he might be able to do this week could give the Steelers reason to like him better than the likes of, I don't know, say a Justin Hunter. Maybe give him, give him a fighting chance in a, three, in a three-person battle for the last receiver spot between him, Darius Hayward Bay, and Sammy Coates. That's the way I see it. So now on the flip side, this I know this one was tougher, but who is the one player that may have been safe but is probably looking on the outside and might be cut now? Uh, I'm going to put in Demarcus Ayers. Uh, since he had a roster spot last year, uh, I think uh, this year it's with the drafting of Juju Smith-Schuster and bringing in uh, Justin Hunter, it really kind of screwed him, even though I think he could beat out Justin Hunter. It's just he really has tough – tough chance now with being injured so uh yeah he's definitely not safe uh who do you have well you know it is interesting to to note that i believe demarcus ayers and kobe hamilton are still eligible for the practice squad i just wanted to throw that out there and i i I think ayers is is cut now like he hasn't been returning punts he's not even on the punt returner depth chart which is the only way i saw him making this team so i think he's he's done for now which is disappointing, but hopefully we'll get a good look at him next year. 
So now, my player was Justin Hunter, the free agent acquisition receiver, uh, formerly of the Bills, I believe was the most recent team. Hunter, now this is different because going into training camp, I don't think many of us thought Hunter was going to make this team. Justin Hunter, when he was signed, though, was someone I thought for sure was going to make this team. When Hunter was signed, keep in mind, Juju Smith-Schuster had A, not been drafted, and B, Martavis Bryant, the suspension seat was the suspension was ongoing. We weren't sure if or when he was coming back. So he was signed as a replacement for him and someone that could be a red zone target and someone that could be a deep threat option as well. Now, he's a decent player in my opinion, but the way it's shaping up to be, he has, he has no resume when it comes to special teams, even going back to college, which you're going to need if you're not going to be a top receiver on this team. And on top of that, I just... I think there's more upside with guys like Sammy Coates and uh, DeMarcus Ayers and Kobe Hamilton than Justin Hunter does, but that's just my opinion. But it's looking more and more like Hunter is on his way out uh, from training camp, even though he started training camp very well. He's going to have to have a big showing this week and next week if he wants to stay on the team. So now, now that we're halfway through the NFL preseason, or almost halfway through, it's time to make some predictions regarding the final roster. Austin, you and I both went through, and we made our own 53-man roster. We went position by position, so why don't we both go you know, group by group here, and we'll start with the quarterbacks. Who do you got? All right. Quarterback is pretty easy. It's just Big Ben, Landry Jones, Josh Stops. Who do you have? It's Yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. We already know that Roethlisberger is the star uh, quarterback. There should no, there should be no questions anymore that Landry Jones is going to be the number two here. And Josh Dobbs is going to be the three, and there's nothing wrong with that. We'll get a good look at him again this upcoming week. At running back, I have four running backs. I kept Le'Veon Bell, James Conner, Fitzgerald Toussaint, and fullback Roosevelt Nix. Nothing to say much about Bell or Nix. Conner is the up-and-comer the third round draft pick, someone I suspect is going to get more playing time as the year goes along, hopefully. And this may have been a surprise, but I kept Fitzgerald Toussaint over Niall Davis because Toussaint is still the starter over him. He's ahead of him on the depth chart, which could be an indicator that they like him better right now, even though they do. I know they do like Davis, but I think that coupled with the fact that Toussaint can do more in special teams as far as more phases, I think that gives him a slight edge right now. What about you, Austin? Who do you have at running back? I have four as well. I have Bell, Connor, uh, Roosevelt, Nix at fullback, and I actually chose Niall Davis. I think Niall Davis performed a little better in his first preseason game. Fitzgerald Toussaint didn't get enough snaps, to be fair, but Niall Davis, I think, did better. And uh, We have to wait a little longer for this, but I'm pretty sure he's going to be a little bit of a better returner. He didn't seem anything electric, but we'll see. So uh, who do you have for wide receiver? I wanted to keep seven really badly, but it's it's really hard to justify keeping seven of these guys. Now, the four p- players that are locks, which I think you'll agree with me, Austin, are Antonio Brown, Martavis Bryant, Eli Rogers, and Juju Smith-Schuster, no? Yep, no, I agree. So that leaves two spots open for me, which we've talked about several times already, but I think this is what's going to happen. I think you're going to ha- definitely have Sammy Coates in there, assuming he's healthy because you still have a third-round pick invested in him, and he showed some potential last year. So I think that's the five. And then the last one, I give the edge to Darius Hayward Bay over the likes of DeMarcus Ayers, Kobe Hamilton, and Justin Hunter because of his his value as a special teams player. So that's that's why I have him making the final roster. Do you also have six wide receivers, Austin? I actually do as well. And like you said, the, the, the first four locks, I, I also – chose Sammy Coates only because of the same reasons you said, that he was a third-round pick, as well as he showed promise in the beginning of the year with so many long ball catches and stuff. And I also went with Darius Hayward Bay for my six because because uh, of his special teams help. He did so much on special teams, and he's, he's like a really good tackler as well. Uh, against the Browns in the final week of the season, I don't, I don't know if anyone remembers this, but uh, on, he stopped what would have been a pick six, by knocking the ball out of the receiver's hands through the back of the end zone so that it was a touchback, and he went back into the Steelers. So he has a lot of value as, as a D, uh, special teams player. Uh, so, so moving on, who do you have for tight end? 
I think you and I will both agree, as we have all offseason and preseason, that this is the weakest position on the offense, at least. So I kept three. Uh, Jesse James, your starter. David Johnson, your backup fullback and main blocking component. And then last but not least, I had Xavier Grimble as the extra tight end. Yep, I, I can't agree more. I have the same exact list, and there's not much to say. So let's go on to the offensive line. Give me yours you first. Gonna... Give me yours first. Oh, okay. Uh, for, I have Alejandro Villanueva, Ramon Foster, Marquise Pouncey, David Acasio, and Marcus Gilbert. Those are the starters, so they're basically given. From there, I have Chris Hubbard, BJ Finney, and Gerald Hawkins. That's, that's eight in total. I could see them going with seven. I mean, it's not likely at all, but uh, Gerald Hawkins has actually been uh, pretty bad, from what I've heard, in, in training camp. So... Just I'm um, I'm gonna watch that more, but I they might get rid of him. I I can't see him doing it because he's a fourth round pick, but it's there's a chance that they only go with seven and instead and maybe add to either wide receiver or cornerback. So who are yours? Do you think they could go with nine instead of eight? What if they What if they add uh, Brian Mahalik as a ninth? You oh, see that I happening? See, I can't see them take away from another position. Every other position kind of needs it. That's true. I agree. But it is interesting to think about because I know they're high on Mahalik. Uh, Now moving over to the defensive side, I kept six defensive linemen. We have the three starters, Hayward, Tuitt, and Hargrave, and then I have backups for each of those guys. And Tyson, Alawalu, LT Walton, and Johnny Maxey taking the roster spot of Daniel McCullers. I think I'm willing to bet it's pretty much the same for you, is it not? It is exactly the same. Yep, we could just go straight to inside linebackers. This is probably the weakest position group on the defense, conversely with the tight end. At inside linebacker, I have the starters Ryan Shazier and Vince Williams, backed up by Tyler Matikavich and LJ Fort and special teams ace Steven Johnson. I I have the same exact list. It only makes sense. The only thing I switch around, I have uh, Steven Johnson as as the backup to uh, Vince Williams instead of, instead of LJ Ford. I think Steven Johnson is going to come off the bench first, but that's, that's really it. All right. Uh, so, I got you. Uh, who, who do you have for outside linebacker? <sighs> well, uh, I just put these in random order, but we already know that Bud wow. Dupree and TJ Watt are going to be the starters right now. James Harrison is the first guy off the bench for TJ Watt, and Arthur Motes is the first guy off the bench for Dupree. And Chicolo is the special teams guy there. Yep, I have the same exact list. It's, we're getting to the point where it's pretty much the same all around here, so that's we can a, just go straight to cornerbacks. Yeah, that's the thing about an AFC championship team, a team that went there last year in the Steelers. They have a pretty good team. It's pretty easy to tell who's going to make this team for the most part. Now, this is where things could get jumbled up a little bit. I have six cornerbacks that I kept, them being Artie Burns, Ross Cockrell, and William Gay as the starters. Behind them, I have Cody Sensabaugh, Cameron Sutton, the third-round draft pick, and Mike Hilton, who has come out of pretty much nowhere, who I think is going to make this roster now. Uh, I have six as well, and it's the exact same six, actually. So nothing different here. It just makes sense. Cody Sensabaugh is a free agent addition, so he's based – he's all – Free agent additions tend to stay with the Steelers. They have a really high percentage of people they call in to stay with them. So, uh, yeah, it just makes sense for him to make it. Uh, but moving on, who do you have for safety? Safety, I think it's pretty pretty much the same thing, pretty straightforward. You have your starters in Mike Mitchell and Sean Davis, your backup strong safety in Robert Golden, and your special teams ace in Jordan Dangerfield. Mm-hmm, same exact thing. So let's go straight to the specialists. Do we even need to? We already know who these guys are. We, we, but, but but Hall of Famer Colin Holba is going to make it over Canada. you got, you got to mention that. Sixth-round draft pick Colin Holba is the only specialist to have competition in training camp, probably only because <laughs> they need to make sure just in case he does screw up. Chris Boswell and Jordan Berry are the only kickers and punters on this roster, so they are literally locks barring injury. And Holba, is is there really any reason to think he won't win this job, especially after now that we've seen him in-game? No, no, there's no reason that he shouldn't win this job. Great. So it's starting to look pretty clear with the exception of a few positions here, Austin. 
Uh-huh. Oh, still three more weeks to go until the regular season starts. But in any case, the second week of the preseason for the Steelers will feature their first home game where they host the NFC champion Atlanta Falcons. So now news has come out that Ben Roethlisberger is not going to play in this game as well. And Landry Jones is still injured, which essentially means Josh Dobbs is going to start for the second straight game. What do you expect to see from Dobbs in his second start? Is it going to be any different from his first start? Uh, I hope to see less uh, balls floating out into the middle of nowhere and hopefully less interceptions from like two to only one or none would be ideal. So do I expect it? Not really. I expect to see the same player about that one touchdown, two interceptions again, and a little bit of inaccurate throws because that's what we expect out of college. But I, I can still hope. Like I said, like like two episodes ago, I have hope for Dobbs to do better than I expect. Uh, what do you think? I think we're going to see him be a little better, certainly more poised and controlled. I don't think we're going to see him having you know huge breakdowns in the early portion of the game. We are going to see more ups and downs. That's the way it is with these young quarterbacks. But I do think he's going to be better than last week. I think we're going to see him throw a few more deep balls, and I think that's where he's at his best. So hopefully, at least anyways, he'll be better. Now, since we're talking about Josh Dobbs, is it fair to assume that there's going to be more starters playing this week? It's the second preseason game. I know we know that most of them play in the third game, but are they going to be playing at all in the second game? Are there going to be any different guys? Is it pretty much going to be you know, the, the second teamers for the most part, just like it was last week. Uh, I think I, we, we can expect more uh, starters to play, but mostly a wide receiver. I expect to see more Eli Rogers, as well as the first appearance of Martavis Bryant, but not for long on either. They're just going to play a little bit more. Uh, what do you think? I'm in complete agreement. Uh, the only difference is I think I'm, we're, I'm hoping at least we're going to see at least a series or two of Marquise Pouncey. I know they don't like playing him a lot, especially since he had a season-ending injury in the preseason two years ago. But I am hoping to see – I want to see the off, starting offensive line for a couple series and just see how – if those guys still have the same chemistry that they used to have. And, uh, yeah, you know, these – These guys are established guys like Pouncey and Bryant, but they haven't practiced or played much at all so far in training camp, so I want to see a little bit of them. So now, going to the other side, we talked mostly about the offense there. We can look at the defense. How do you think they're going to fare against a better overall team, certainly offensively, and the NFC Championship winners, the Falcons? Uh, Well, I don't expect Julio Jones to play, but putting them against Mohamed Sanu and possibly Taylor Gabriel... Should be a good test for them. Uh, also, as well as Tevin Coleman, who is a really good backup running back. Uh, Schaub is also a starter at one point and solid for the Texans. And I would say better than Geno Smith and Josh Johnson at the moment. So this is going to be a good test for the defense. I think they sh- they'll still do decently here. What do you think? Well, the Falcons are not going to be at full strength regardless. Devontae Freeman, their running back, has been ruled out with a concussion. And I'd have to imagine that most of the starters for the Falcons are either not going to play or only play for a series or two. But the good thing about playing a pretty good team like the Falcons is that they're pretty deep, meaning that they have good backups too. Case in, case in point, the guys you just mentioned, including guys like Tevin Coleman, who are pretty good in their own right. So seeing how the Steelers fare against these guys is going to help us give, get a good gauge as far as how good they actually are. So I'm looking forward to that. So... You know, it is the preseason. Austin and I, you know, we don't really have much to say about these games. It's It doesn't make sense to look in too, too much into these games because we know that they really don't mean a whole lot on, uh, on the surface. So we're going to jump right into our bold predictions. Don't worry, we'll have more in-depth analysis and predictions and previews during the regular season as we did last year. We're going to move right into the bold predictions. So, Austin, I'll give you one from my list right now real quickly. I want to hear what you think about it. Niall Niall Davis has more receiving yards than rushing touchdowns. And what I mean by that is that Davis is going to have a very long uh, catch and run, maybe not a touchdown. I originally thought he was going to have like a screen pass that would turn into a touchdown, but I'm thinking more right now. It's going to be something like a 70 yard catch or like a 50 yard catch. And then he'll add in a couple more catches for maybe another 20 yards. And I think that'll be more than rush his uh, rushing total will be. Yeah, I could see that. I could see him having more uh, receiving yards or rushing yards. That that makes sense to me. I didn't. I, mean, I didn't realize he was that elusive. 
Uh, yeah, he's pretty shaky. For, for being a punt returner, he's learned how to be pretty shaky with, with his feet, I would say. So give, go ahead and give me yours now. All right. My first one is that James Conner plays and rushes for over 65 yards in the first half. So that's my first one. So let's hear your second. I have Xavier Grimble catching five passes and a touchdown. He had one taken away last week, and uh, I know he's pretty hungry. Yeah, he's one of three tight ends, but that also doesn't mean that he's going to play even if he makes the roster. So I think he's fighting for playing time, so I think he's going to put up a big one with a touchdown. Second, what's your second prediction? Um, My second one is that Mike Hilton records an interception this game. He was fantastic last week. I think he's going to be fantastic this week. Why not? Why not though? That is that is that even a bold prediction at this point? I I don't know. I'm just I'm just calling things. It's more like just making predictions. I don't know if it's if it's bold. <laughs> Honestly though, for, for real it is. I'm just I'm just messing with you. Hilton has been making big plays all all of training camp, so it, it would be nice to see him make that kind of a play too. But in any case, I'll get back to my final bold prediction: is that Cody Sensabaugh has a pick six. Yes, I'm going with the pick six because Matt Schaub is the Falcons quarterback. And yes, I picked Sensabaugh because he's not Arthur Motes, who was the guy I originally wanted to pick. But he's a defensive back, and I figured, you know what? The starters probably aren't going to play a ton, so maybe Matt Schaub will throw it to Cody Sensabaugh, and who knows? Maybe he'll have a pick six. There you go. What's your last bold prediction? My final one is that T.J. Watt is going to lead the teams in tackles and passes defense. Uh, I think that's a pretty easy, uh, a pretty safe one. Oh yeah, you know he played the entire game last uh, last week, and he had like ten to twelve special team snaps too. That's incredible. Dude has a high <laughs> motor. He didn't he didn't show that he was getting tired if he was. Nope. What a guy. Hopefully we can see more of that, but. That's our bold predictions for the week. So now, moving on to our last thing, our final score prediction, Austin. What's yours? I have the Falcons winning 27-17 because the Steelers still usually lose in preseason. The the first game didn't change anything for me. Uh, What do you have? Pretty close. I have the Falcons winning 28-20. You know, it is what it is. The, The Falcons have a deep team. They're a really good team, great offensive team. The Steelers, on the other hand, like you said, they usually lose in the preseason, and uh, you know there isn't really much to say about it. So, wouldn't surprise me at all if the Steelers do end up dropping this one. You all set, Austin? I am all set for today. All righty, Steeler Nation. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions about the show, any questions you want to ask us about the Steelers, that we could ask, answer for you, email us at strongerthansteelpodcast at gmail Check us out on social media. We have SoundCloud, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram pages. And you can find all of those through our website, which is strongerthansteelnfl.blogspot.com. You can check out all of our content there. And like I said, if you have any questions, you can email us or contact us on any of those platforms. We'd love to hear from you. Austin, thank you again for joining me. It's been a it's been a crazy couple weeks. I can't believe training camp is already over. But it means we're that much closer to football starting, so I can't wait. I can't wait either, man. Less it's been too long. Half a month from now, we'll, we'll be there. We're almost there, Steeler Nation. We're almost there. But until then, take care, everybody. Austin, thank you again for joining me. Have a good night.